Wedding planners, what is the weirdest couple you've ever met? Story one, I'm not a wedding planner, but I manage events at the facilities I currently work at, and we had a wedding where the groom wore a three-piece tux, all white, with banana yellow converse and a banana yellow bow tie. His groomsmen wore all with banana yellow converse and ties. Throughout the wedding service, the groomsmen would hold up emoji signs reacting to things that were happening, each holding up puke emojis when they kissed. When it came time to get the rings, the best man acted like he had lost it when suddenly a man in the audience stood up and threw a frisbee with the ring taped to it to the groom. They were all avid frisbee golfers. The frisbee was also their guest book signed by everyone who came. The thing that saddened me is it seemed the bride really did not want to be marrying the groom. One of her bridesmaids came to me before the wedding asking for any snacks for the bride because she felt like she was going to throw up from crying so much. I hope the best for them in the future, but it was all a little hard to watch. Story 2. I've had a few weird couples for sure. The one that comes to mind first is one that is getting married later this year. The bride and groom are around 19, 20, and they act like children. Like the bride literally will only talk in a baby voice to her parents who hover over everything. They also pick to go with Spider-Man and Beauty and the Beast as their theme. Yes, they want both to be depicted and not in a fun adult interpretation of it, but in like wanting to use party supplies that you would use for a kid's birthday. My venue also rents out a fog machine that can be used for the first dance. We had this one groom that was obese with ninjas and wanted to try to hide in the fog and jump out and do crazy karate moves and such. It was weird. Those are the only ones that stand out to me, but I've definitely dealt with a lot of weirdos. Story 3. Ooh, I've had some good ones. I had the groom who wanted the minister to do the speak now or forever hold your peace thing, at which point the groom would reveal the gun holstered on his belt by lifting up his suit jacket. I nixed that immediately. The bride was perfectly normal and sweet, and I honestly worried that she was in an abusive relationship. Then there was the father of the bride, who was a very strict Presbyterian, and was hosting a dry wedding for 225 guests, and reprimanded me for using the words cocktail hour. Like, yes, sir, I understand there will be no alcohol served at this wedding, but it's still called cocktail hour. He also wanted 225 prime ribs, served in 20 minutes, which was impossible with the size of our kitchen. He was a condescending, unpleasant person. Then there was the mother of the groom that pretty clearly didn't like the bride, and didn't want to pay one penny more than she had to for the rehearsal dinner, which turned out to be a rehearsal luncheon. She decided on a deli buffet menu, make your own sandwich style, at $13 per person, didn't even splurge for the $15 per person version which would have gotten her some potato salad and desserts. She also liked to call me on my cell phone at 7.30 a.m., well before I was in the office. I stopped answering her calls until she would call my office phone. All in all, though most of my couples were perfectly normal and nice. I honestly had more trouble with parents than I did with couples. Story 4. Not a planner, but how about the lady in GA who tried to slander a wedding venue and had all her friends write negative reviews on their website FB page bought a domain name as well? A few days ago, a bride made a whole website about her experience with a local wedding venue, claiming that they were trying to force her to go through with her March wedding during this pandemic, and that they weren't offering her the choice to reschedule unless it was to a Monday or Tuesday, among many other false claims. If you want to, you can read her website here. And yes, she really bought a whole domain name just to make and share this site. Her website got shared by a lot of her friends and family and eventually made its way around local Facebook groups, which of course meant there were a lot of angry people attacking the venue, giving them negative reviews, and trying to destroy their business. So many people were sharing this girl's post, warning people to stay away from and beware of this venue. The bride even made a Facebook post encouraging everyone to leave them bad reviews, and to remind everyone to make sure they're negatively reviewing the correct venue. Well, the venue deactivated their Facebook to try and prevent the damage of tons of fake bad reviews coming in. But tonight they reactivated it and posted their response, complete with a recorded phone call between them and the bride. Bridezilla isn't even a good enough word to describe how insane this girl is. I can't believe how calm and gracious the venue owner was throughout this conversation, and I'm so glad she exposed this nasty girl for all her lies. Story 5 Ooh. Not a wedding planner, but attended a wedding of this super rich acquaintance. It was a large venue to accommodate around 1,500 to 2,000 guests. Pretty common in my culture. The theme for all wedding festivities was, don't ask why, Fifty Shades of Grey. Right from calling each other my Mr. Grey and my Miss Steel. Right from masks to fans and color themes, 
The entire place was decked up following that theme, not to mention as you enter the venue, there was a pictorial depiction of their journey set to the same theme. I have some great memories explaining this to my super conservative parents. Edit. Grammar. Story 6. Not particularly a wedding planner, however, I was a wedding photographer at one of those cheesy wedding chapels on the Strip in Las Vegas. The story I remembered most was this couple who got married. It was business as usual. We didn't think much of it, had the service, and took the photos. We told them to return the next day for photos. The next morning, we get a call from the groom we will call James, saying that his new wife, Emily, threw him out of the car last night and left him on the side of the road. We come to find out James wasn't an American citizen, so he essentially paid Emily, I believe $10,000, so he can start the process of becoming a citizen. He was now asking if he could annul his wedding after being scammed out of 10 k It's fairly common you'd go online or even to other chapels to shop around to compare prices and the types of wedding packages other chapels offer. So a few months later, we see Emily on another competitor's wedding website with a different guy. So we assume she was making this a business marrying dudes for money and leaving them high and dry. I wish I had some more resolution to the story, however. That's all I have on my end. Other than that, you encounter a lot of interesting walks of life doing Elvis theme wedding ceremonies with the occasional costume themes. Story 7. Former wedding coordinator for a very small, very high-end company. You can make a lot of assumptions just on observing someone's wedding morning. Most memorable, not weird, but terrible in all ways. Also, possibly, socially inept. This bride and groom were clearly both so rich and so entitled their entire lives that they didn't know how to function properly. The bridal party suite, in a penthouse hotel room in downtown Chicago, was silent, except for a comment here and there from the bride's mother about it being a big day. The bride complained about everything. The mimosa being strong, the water being room temp, the bagels being bagels instead of fruit. Everything. She didn't respond when I asked her questions, and instead looked at a bridesmaid with annoyance to answer for her. The groom's suite was trashed with liquor bottles, and they were walking around in boxers five minutes before photos. I told them we had five minutes, and the groom drunkenly responded, Hey, hey, I'm pretty sure I'm really important today. It's not going to happen without me. And it's not happening in five minutes. And then the guys decided to slide down the back stairwell banister, instead of take the elevator to the lobby. One of the groomsmen didn't go with them and told me I really needed to take control of the guys, otherwise, why were they paying me? Oh, and, and groom's mom came into the suite with her dress, which showed almost all of her titties, and said, how do I look, boys? They all hooped and hollered for her. I had to stifle a laugh. Zero ten would not recommend. Story eight. Oh, I had a couple whose last name in another language literally means banana which was actually really fitting, because they were epic D. Words for that, yep. The guy would hit on me, all the female waitstaff, and even the company's owner's mother, who was 65, whenever his fiance left the room. Not just harmless flirtations, I mean like legit vulgar propositions. That wasn't even the worst part, though. They had this request that we save all the bottles of beer, wine, and liquor from the event, because the husband and his groomsmen were going to melt them down and make dildos out of them in various styles, to be used on the bride after they were married. I just, that was the last wedding I helped coordinate. I left that company as soon as that wedding was done. Story 9. Not the newlyweds, but the parents of the bride at a wedding I coordinated my first year of business. I had not been warned of any family drama until the bridal party was walking in the door for the grand entrance, and I hear the bride and sister repeating as if hyping oneself up, Fack you, Deborah. Deborah is the bride's mother, and I get a crash course of her style of crazy. There are no planned speeches for such reason. However, the mother of the groom takes it upon herself to give a toast. Understandable, but there is a schedule for a reason in these settings. So the father of the bride soon after approaches the DJ for the mic so he could give a toast. Poor bloke looked like a deer in the headlights, unsure what to do. Obviously, it's a normal request, but again, he had been warned about the mother, not the father, right? Wrong. The father barely got five words out before the mother took the microphone from him and launched into a very narcissistic speech about how it wasn't easy being a doctor's wife and it was so hard to conceive the bride. I've never in my life heard nor expect to again hear the word placenta used in a wedding toast. Eventually the mic was and we got it away from her, but it was after the bridal party and family had tried and failed to use normal social cues to intervene. Story 10. I was a wedding coordinator intern at a local banquet hall once summer. The actual coordinator on staff would work with them for months. Then I'd typically help out with the rehearsal and ceremony reception the next day. 
We had one couple that we knew was going to have an interesting ceremony. We knew she was going to have elements around the hall that were woodsy and natural because she liked fairies, and also their best friend was going to marry them and it was his first time. They show up to rehearsal and she's in full fairy wings and she confirmed that, yes, she was going to wear them in the wedding. Sure, whatever. We start getting a ceremony order together. Groom is super awkward and won't give a straight answer, barely even looks us in the eyes. Bride has somehow failed to inform us that her parents are divorced and haven't spoken to one another in years. Great. That eventually gets worked out and they walk down the rehearsal aisle to the poor guy officiating. We tell the officiant he can practice what he wants to say or just skip it into the ring exchange. Homeboy pulls out a stack of papers and proceeds to read a 25-minute speech. Bride looks like she wants to assent to another plane, and the bridesmaids are barely containing themselves. They were nice, and their wedding day was great and frilly and warm. Oh, and the officiant had them do their vows while he twirled a wand with streamers on it. What a weird weekend. Story 11. Had one couple who left to, she thinks my tractor's alluring, her a tiny thing in a pink gingham dress, and he about six one inch in overalls with no shirt. One couple, very young, who wanted to do the dance they had learned in ballroom class, but could only do it to Santana's smooth one couple. Again, very young, who had nine bridesmaids in floor-length hot pink gown with matching elbow-length hot pink gloves and matching hot pink converse. And they served pink lemonade to drink one couple, who wouldn't let me play any songs but the ones they requested, which were all hardcore rap. And most of their guests were 60-plus-year-old white people. Story 12. Early in the morning, I had to go on a hunt for the missing groom in Marbella, who had been on a 24-HR sweets-fueled bender with his grooms and best man the night before the wedding. I found him in one of his mate's rooms at the hotel still wide awake. There were pills all over the floor, and the room they were staying in had kids in, who were asleep at the time but still flipping disgraceful. The bride was threatening to leave, but eventually changed her mind, and the wedding went ahead. The groom hadn't slept and his dinner speech was the worst cow show I had ever seen. The very angry father-in-law had to prompt him throughout on what to say. I later learned that two of the bridesmaids got divorced with the groomsmen after that night. Story 13. I sometimes do wedding playlists for extra cash. Basically, I'm the alternative to a DJ for people on a budget. They pay me a flat rate and give me parameters and I give them a set list of music based on their suggestions. In an opposite answer... The most common songs I get that couples claim is their song is Broken Road by Rascal Flats for the older crowd, and for millennials it's either Our Song by Taylor Swift or Teenage Dream by Katy Perry. I also get a fair amount of idiot grooms asking for the chorus of Crazy Bad Person by Buck Cherry, and literally no one but him and his best man find it funny. It's universally a disaster and your wife will flipping hate you. The weirdest, and in my opinion, the best song a couple has chosen as their song was Spook Show Baby by Rob Zombie. It was a totally normal wedding with a white dress and cake tie all that. But these two just really loved Rob Zombie and wanted their first dance to be to Spook Show Baby. Totally awesome. The crowd loved it and everyone was really happy. Story 14. I had a couple hire me and the night of our first consultation, they bickered and got a little inappropriate. Maybe they thought it was funny, but they were strangers and I met them in my home and I found having them there uncomfortable. It seemed clear that they didn't know one another very well, and it looked to me to be a green card kind of situation. I would bet money that they are no longer together. Story 15. I'm a chef for a caterer event planner, U.S.-based. We coordinate everything for the couples, unless they choose not to. We always learn the crazy stuff about the couple direct from the person who has been meeting with them for months and is coordinating the night of, or we saw it firsthand if it happened at the wedding itself. One couple got married in a gorgeous old venue. No alcohol. Very odd, no music, no dancing. The couple had their actual first kiss after the vows. They barely looked at each other the whole night. A waitstaff found the officiant's wife crying on the floor, not knowing if she could keep doing it. She pleaded for a drink, which we didn't have because it was a dry ceremony. Then she disappeared for a while. We think they might have all been in a cult, but that info wasn't relevant to the booking, so we can't know. Honestly, that is just the first one that comes to mind. After seven years doing this, you see some weird cow. Story 16. As a former caterer and venue manager, I've certainly seen my share of crazy. Like the mom who insisted on serving chicken, but then said our brined chicken was raw and swore up and down for months that we were trying to poison her. I was never able to convince her to just switch to the flipping short rib. But the selfish couples are the ones who really make me sad. I had one couple book an old barn for their wedding. The ceremony was out in a field, cocktails on the ground floor of the barn, and reception up a narrow staircase on the second floor. 
This bad person booked a non-accessible venue knowing that one of her guests uses a wheelchair. He showed up to this venue 1.5 hours outside the city and was basically only able to attend the cocktail hour. We served him and his wife a nice private dinner on the ground floor and made them as comfortable as we could. They were super nice, but you could see the sadness in their eyes. They thanked us for dinner and left without saying goodbye to the couple. Story 17. I had a couple who were born in America, but both sets of parents had emigrated from India. The couple had already been married for seven years, but had a civil ceremony. They were now giving their moms the big wedding with all the traditions. The game plan was Hindu ceremony, cocktail hour, Western vow renewal, cocktail hour, reception. He was such a groomzilla, worse than any bride I ever dealt with. I could go into plenty of examples of why they were a weird couple, but one moment sums it up. It was August and scorching hot. Hindu ceremonies are long and theirs ran longer. During the first cocktail hour, the couple was changing for the Western vow renewal. It was time to start this second ceremony and the guests had been outdoors for two hours and counting. The bride said she needed 20 more minutes to redo her hair. The groom demanded I hold open the dressing room door and he started screaming at her to get her a dollar dollar out here and just tearing into her. And she started laughing hysterically. As I stood there between them, holding the door, Wondering how the hell they'd already made it seven years together. Story 18. Oh my gosh, you could write a book with all the stuff my mother has seen. She's a wedding coordinator, and she's had everyone from people planning a wedding two months out to three years out. My personal favorite story is one of a couple, not to bride and groom, but a bridesmaid and her husband. They got incredibly drunk even before the ceremony. Well, you know, there's only one thing to do when you have just drank a significant amount of liquid, and when you're drunk, it seems like a great plan. So the bridesmaid lifted up her dress and took a pour out the water right next to the cake table. My mother watched this all go down and had to quickly move the bridesmaid and the husband, who had just unzipped his pants to do the same, away to the actual restroom. Thankfully, it was an outdoor venue and the cake table was on gravel, so we didn't need to do much for cleanup. Story 19. Oh, there's one more story I have to share. I was away on own my honeymoon when this wedding happened. I did all the planning with this couple, though, and thought they were a little reserved, but overall very nice. As my staff slowly filled me in once I returned, I was sure they were joking. Turns out it's all true. During the rehearsal, the mom prompts some petty jealousy between the bride and her two sisters, who were both bridesmaids. They literally escalated to a physical fight and no one could quite figure out how it happened. Day of the wedding and the ceremony goes okay. There's some fantasy elements thrown in, but nothing we weren't used to. Fairy-type accessories and nerd culture references in the vows. The bridal party makes their entrance to the reception, and somehow the sisters slipped bathrobes over their dresses without anyone noticing until they were walking in. They walked in stone cold, no dancing, no smiling, and went straight to their seats. The bride and groom entered immediately after them, and most guests were still trying to figure out what was going on, and the cheers for the newlyweds wasn't full swing. Just what the sisters wanted. The bride's family apparently left shortly after dinner, which the bride refused to eat. Things got better after that. Still a little weird, though. The groom pulled out a katana for the cake cutting, which had never been discussed in planning meetings or prepared for. He disappeared and returned, swinging it. And to top it off, the bride changed into a Batman unitard for the grand exit. I really thought my team and conspired to come up with a crazy story until I spoke to the photographer who confirmed everything. Story 20. As a musician, I've performed for some strange wealthy couples. Weirdest was playing a January wedding at the Vancouver Trump Hotel. The couple spent much of the evening sitting at the head table not speaking, or really smiling for that matter. Also, front and center was a podium with a giant Trump logo on the front, which I'm assuming the couple chose to have there because it's classy. Story 21. A young couple who had only known each other about six months, and were both barely 20. Her father was a congressman, and basically used the wedding as a big social event for political friends. Her mother hired a planner and planned the entire event with little input from the couple, including the guest list. The couple only knew the wedding party and their family members, which was a small portion of the 300-plus people who attended. The groom went off to drink with his buddies, and the bride was hanging out with her, very boy, best friend. All the politicians kept congratulating the bride and her friend, tapping their glasses to try to get them to kiss each other, and making lewd jokes as everyone got progressively more drunk. By the end of the night, the groom was passed out in his truck and the bride and her best friend rode off in the fancy, just-married car to the applause and waves of the oblivious political crowd. Weird party. And yes, best friend is definitely boy. No funny business. Story 22. Part 1. Steamy pour yourself a glass of wine. This one gets steamy. 
My wife and I used to own a wedding entertainment company called Forever After Entertainment. I'm proud of that name. Lol. She was the planner, coordinator, and designer. I had experience with audio and lighting design, so I DJ emceed. We had the total package up lighting, decor, etc. This attracted upper-class clients who placed a large emphasis on the wedding and little on the marriage. This one couple in their late 20s were law students. My photographer Brian called me after a session with them. He mentioned there's something odd about them and felt they weren't in love. Brian's a good judge of this. We had many clients and was passionate about caring for them. It bugged him, but we agreed people marry for weird reasons. A week later, the bride, Sarah, fictional name, gave me a thumb drive containing special songs she wanted played at the reception. I met her in a parking lot. Talking from our driver's seat, she was talkative and wanted to vent. I let her talk. I have lots of women in my family, so I get it. These are exciting times. I got home and plugged the drive into my laptop. Image files appeared. Strange. I clicked on the folder containing all of them. Yikes, dozens of semi-lingerie photos of Sarah popped up. Semi-pro shots of her on a white leather chase lounge doing different poses. The kind you gift your husband on the honeymoon. Sarah's a quirky type A future lawyer Aprox. 5 minus 3 E, maybe 130 pounds, blonde, attractive Southern Belle. Striving for dignity, I quickly exited out of the file. My heart was in my throat. I was only 24 at the time. I felt embarrassed because I reopened it to make sure I wasn't crazy. And testosterone probably played a factor. I felt bad for her. Poor thing grabbed the wrong drive. I called her. She picked up on the first ring. I told her she gave me the wrong thumb drive. I said, I'm so sorry, but there's photos of you on here. I saw what they were, then quickly closed it. She said, you quickly closed it? Wow, I guess you agree with Gary, fiancé, that I'm a fat cow. I was shocked. I empathized. Oh, no, that's not what I mean. This is your privacy. I didn't want to violate that. She went on, what type of man doesn't want to see everything when they get the chance? I said, most men are disgusting. She chuckled. Disgusting? Like me? Attempting to comfort, I said, Hold on, obviously you guys have hit a rough patch. I think you're gorgeous. He does too, he's using your looks as ammo in arguments. It's women's easiest target and likely the first thing he could pull from his mind. She ignored me and asked, did you like the one in the white chair? I'm gonna make him a photo book out of them. I said, yes, lovely. Listen, Sarah, it may be best if you just take this drive and forget this ever happened. No harm done, she agreed. I went into the living room to tell my wife what happened. She was shocked but laughed. She then said, wait, how long did you look at them? Here we go. Not long. My wife is five years older and mature. We didn't discuss it for long. We're busy people. A week later, Sarah dropped off another drive. I joked, this isn't another edition of Green's last name, Playboy, is it? She snickered as she drove off. At this time, I knew she was flirting with me and there was tension. This was seven years ago. I was 24. Young men are slow. I stabbed the little drive in. As expected, music files popped up. I scrolled down, mocking half of them. I explained to clients that I'll use some, but not all. I'm the expert. We already agreed upon formal songs for ceremony, cake cutting, reception, etc. It's important to get the right song for the mood and personality of the couple. Now I'm thinking I should have leaned more towards Marvin and less classical. E.L. I scrolled to the bottom of the files. Two image files appeared. Great. Clicked on the first. It was a blurry image of a bed. Accident, I guessed. I imagined it to be Sarah's bed. Tidy but random items on the floor and nightstand. Second image was a selfie of Sarah on that bed. She had fresh showered hair and was wearing a pink silk robe exposing cleavage. Intentional cleavage. She was leaning towards the camera with puckered red lips. Text had been edited onto the photo in red. It said, thank you, my name. You're such a sweetie. Love ya. Now believe it or not, this kind of behavior isn't unusual. I've gotten hit on by brides and various wedding party members. Love is in the air. Brides hug me, kiss me on the cheek, flirt, mothers of the bride will grab your butt. It's an eccentric metro close relationship business. I'm a soft-spoken INFP that's clean, dresses to impress, and make women comfortable. But my gosh, this woman was strange. I like the attention, though, because I'm thinking about five-star reviews. Moments later, my phone rings. It was the fiancé, Gary. Oh no, this is awkward. I guess she told him I was right. Well, sort of right. Hey, Gary. Gary said, my name. I just want to apologize for my effing fiancé, man. She couldn't find her head if it wasn't attached. He carried on with the locker room talk. Then he said, I know that's something you didn't ever want to see. Haha, <laughs> you're scarred for life. Speechless, I thought. This guy's a shower. However, I laughed it off like one of the guys. He invited me to golf, and I made up an excuse. Okay, ha ha ha, see you, Gary. Have a good one, buddy. LOL.